from a Western perspective, to me, love is a dangerous word from a Western perspective. From a deeper perspective, we have a word called mer. Mer. Mer is the type of love that's a cosmic love. It is the love that the cosmos has for us. It is the love that I used to tell our children when my children in my classroom would say, well, my daddy, I, I don't have a daddy. I said, no, you do have a daddy. He just may not be with you, but you do have a daddy. You wouldn't be here if you didn't have a daddy. But no matter if you have a physical daddy or not, your mommy and daddy will only use as physical instruments to bring your spiritual being onto this planet. And that you have a cosmic father. In science, it's called panspermia. There's a name for your cosmic father. And you have a cosmic mother. And they guide you and they watch you. And before you were ever conceived, this is what I tell children. I, I tell it in a certain kind of way, but this is the story that I tell it. Before you were ever brought onto this planet, the cosmos had a plan for your divine being. And they decided to use your mommy and your daddy to have, if I may say, a big bang. <laughs> in order to bring you into existence. Because you have a job to do. This is your assignment. And I have met people who have been given, life is like when you're born, you're given cards. Some people are given very good cards. There are others that are given not too good cards. I have seen people who have been given a perfect hand lose. And people who were given a rough hand they win. Because it's not the cards you're given in life, it's how you play them. And there is such a complete supreme love I have for our people because I don't know if you realize. I don't know if we really realize this. Because if we really realize this, we would get up out of these chairs after all is said and done and get out here and do something for the children that are going to be born in the year 2123. I have a hundred year plan. Not for this generation, not for the next generation. I want to know where will our children be in the year 2123? How will they call our name? What will they say about us? What will they say we did? And makes me no difference what station in life you are. Whatever you do, wherever you are, stewardess or steward on an airline, post office worker, nurse, doctor, it makes me no difference. The question is, what are we going to do now that we know how great we are. What are we going to do? That's the question. When our sister Vicki Dillard was talking about home and family, we have to make our homes a safe haven. We have to make our homes a safe place for our children. We as teachers have to make the classroom a safe place where children can come and learn. I use the acronym OPENX. Opportunities for learning, environment for growth, and experiences in the individual and social settings. OPENX. Nations and dynasties are not built from baby daddies. Mm. Family, there are things we have to talk about. Everybody wants to get healed, but nobody wants to get the operation with bloodshed. We've got some intellectual and mental bloodshed.
said to go through that. Black folk, we don't have a problem with relation. We have a problem with commitment. When I was young, doing my thing, I was walking around with shopping bags, Mad Hatter, Shirt King, okay? Got married, had children, babies on us, toys on us. Those are my shopping bags. I changed the way in which I spoke from I, me, and mine to us, ours, and we. It's a different way of looking at things. This is what our ancestors built the pyramids on. This is what they built the temples on. This is who we are. This is who we have the potential to be. This is the lives we lived before we were so rudely and crudely interrupted by a people who knew not to create. They did not live by the laws of Ma'at. Truth, justice, balance, harmony, order, arrangement, morality, and reciprocity. Reciprocity is my favorite characteristic of Ma'at. Because reciprocity is something that we would all stop and wonder and think before we act. Reciprocity said, you shall reap what you sow. We'll go around. You will get what you Would we do the things we do if we really thought that things would come back sevenfold on us? If you did a kind thing, that kind would come back to you sevenfold. If you did something that was not good, it would come back on you sevenfold. Would you do it? Well, if you did, you'd have to be insane. And that's a whole other story altogether. Family, we are phenomenal people. And as I finish up, I just want us to understand the world that we're living in. Prophets are not psychics. They're just good historians. Because when you know what happened in the past, you can interpret what's happening in the present, and you can predict what's about to happen in the future. Family, the Indo-European ethnic stock, but they're not a race. There's only one race on the planet. And that race was conceived, born, nurtured, sustained, educated, civilized, technologized, became geniuses in Africa. And when they got their show together, then they took it on the road. And they peopled the planet. And for Thousands of years, the only human beings on the planet were the people we call the Twa and Buti Khoisan people of Central and Southern Africa. That's science. The bones talk. All around the world. A group of us left and got up into a northern climate, and because of the climate, we depigmented ourselves. The hair texture changed, the morphology changed, the limb length changed, and we morphed into who we today call Indo-Europeans. It's science, it's not personal. Hmm. The African that had had a pioneer plant that was healthy that looked like a grape, in the cold it became freeze dry and it got calcified, and it lost its basic spiritual systems. About 2000 BC, about 4,000 years ago, these Africans who morphed into Indo-Europeans came back down south and waged war on their brothers and sisters. And in so doing, in waging war on their brothers and sisters, they created a system that was born to die. And every time they gave birth to it, it began to tick its life, and then it died. Evidence, history, is not personal. This is history. The first 
real incursion on the African community happened through the Persians, Indo-Europeans from Iran with Cambyses came in in 525 BC, overran the Kush Kemet dynasty in Egypt, or Kemet, and they ruled from 525 until approximately 332 BC. They brought nothing with them. They tried to attach themselves to the culture, couldn't they? And by 332, the Greeks came in, who really aren't Greeks, because Greek didn't exist at that time. They were Macedonians, but they really didn't exist at this time. They were nothing but a bunch of little nation states that were back then amongst each other. They came down and they beat the Indo-Europeans, the Persians, at, in 332. So the Persian Empire only lasted about 181 years. By 30 BC, the Romans are coming in and they're taking over the Greeks. That's only a little over 330 years. And then in 426, the end of the Roman Empire, although I would take it back a little bit further, but I'll give them a little time. Hmm. By 426 BC, the Roman Empire fell. That's a little over, what, 456 years. That didn't last long, family. The first through sixth dynasty of Kemet lasted over 2,200 years. We had dynasties that lasted for centuries and only fell because another nation came in and brought something better in. And they built from that Ghana, Mali, Songhai. This is who we are. We are great people. We are the foundations of the world. Okay. 426 comes, Europe falls. They call it the Dark Ages. I call it the White Ages, but that's beside the <laughs> It wasn't until 711 that another group of Africans go in and stay there all the lives again. And the first thing that the Africans brought in was they said, yeah, need some soap up in here. <laughs> then after the soap, they brought a liquid in that was called Al Cool. Because after you wash your funky self, disinfect yourself. They brought medicine. They brought different ways of agriculture. And from 711 until 1492, Africans rule the world. They won't tell you this in school. If I were them, I wouldn't tell you that either. I'd have to be out of my mind to give you the power that I tried to take away from you. Right. And to tell you the truth, forget it. CRT. <laughs> That's the best thing that happened to us. I want to thank my descendants. I thank him. It was Malcolm that told us. We celebrated our brother's 98th birthday. We celebrated when Malcolm said, I have more respect for Barry Goldwater than I do for Lyndon Johnson. Because at least Barry Goldwater going to tell you, I'm scared of you. And you ain't getting no power. Whereas the other one was Sly Fox. As opposed to the brute wolf. Malcolm says, don't forget they both belong to the dog. And now we are at the end of this next one. The Omen Empire. This is falling, family. Their economic system is falling, their spiritual system is falling. They're fighting amongst themselves. This is the Willie Lynch Syndrome. In another way. Don't get in the way. Mind your business. Okay. That's why Dr. Collins said get some popcorn. Watch the show. Come on, family, we better do something because even if what I'm telling you is true, the question is, are we ready to govern ourselves? Are we ready to educate ourselves? Do we have an economic system in place? Are our brothers and sisters 
getting along with each other? Are we building families? Because you see, people build nations, but families build dynasties. Nations rise and fall, but dynasties last forever. Family, what are we doing? What are we doing? We can look out there and blame them. We know what they're doing. Nobody's better at knowing what they're doing than us. The real question now is we have to ask ourselves, what are we going to do? We need to support the hidden history you see. Yeah. I've been talking to Brother Tom, and I got some ideas as an educator, how you can bring children into that museum and give them an experience that they have never had before. I had the experience in the museums of New York, so I know how to do this. But now this leads me to the title of what I came out to talk to you about. And that is legacy. The legacy that you leave. The legacy that you leave is based on a dash. When you were born, you have a date. Sunrise. Now some people call sunset. I don't call death sunset. I call it sunrise. Your sun never sets. Your sun rises higher. But the legacy you leave is the dash between the day you were born and the day that your sun rose higher. So my question to you, family, is what is your dash? Because the legacy that you leave is not what people say about you after you have gone. Your legacy is what you do when you're alive. And what you do when you're alive becomes the legacy that you leave. Family, I love you, Mary. I respect you. I honor you and our children. We are on our way to the promised land. They don't say that. We got some difficult days ahead, but we're on our way to the promised land. But family, the future wealth of the planet is solar power. Teach the children solar power. Mm. Keep on keeping on. It ain't over till we win. All power to the planet. Let go, let go, let go.